All right, we're going to do a lesson here on the graphs of f, f prime, and f double prime. Um, this lesson is really going to focus on, we're going to be given a graph of f prime, and we're just going to go through and answer all these questions. It shouldn't take too long. Um, a little bit of thinking is really needed for the later problems, but let's just go for it. Um, so the graph of f prime is given, and this is the domain. Oops. This is the domain right here. Um, from negative 33, and it gives us some of these values, okay? And now, since it's giving us a graph of f prime, it's actually a graph of a rate of change, which today is more relevant than it's ever been. Okay, can you think of any time you may have seen a graph of rate of change? Okay, we are in the time of COVID-19 with being quarantined right now, and that's all we're ever told are the cases per day, the cases per day. Every time you see a graph of something that says cases per day, that's actually a graph of rate of change. So this is very relevant um, for today is we are given a graph of rate of change, which is like for COVID, you're given, oh, the, the cases per day type of deal. And we're going to kind of go through and answer these questions. Now, this isn't a COVID specific graph, but this is kind of where you can look at a graph that they give you. You can see on the news. Um, and in, in internet stories, I don't know how people get their news these days, um, you, the young kids, but um, hopefully it's not Twitter and TikTok, right? So looking at this graph, let's go ahead and answer these questions. So here we go. So if what values of x is from negative 3 to 3, is the graph increasing? So remember, this is the derivative. I'm going to actually make a bit of a sign chart here because I think it's going to make our life a little bit easier to answer this. So if this is from negative 3 all the way to 3. So this, I'm going to have critical points here at 2, sorry, negative 2, at 0, and actually, yeah, I was right at the first time, at 2. Here's my critical points because that's when f prime is equal to 0. So from negative 3 to 2, my f prime is positive. From negative 2 to 0, my f prime is negative. From 0 to 2, I'm positive. And from 2 to 3, I'm also positive. Okay, so we know that f is increasing. Get this back up here now. We know f is increasing when the derivative is positive. So is this increasing? Well, from looking at my sign chart from negative 3 to negative 2, from 0 to 2, and from 2 to 3. Well, why is that? Because f prime is positive, and that's all you need to do. Okay? So that's high note if something is increasing. For values of x, does the graph have a relative maximum? So now go ahead. Let's look at my sign chart. Let's my little arrows here. That's increasing, decreasing, increasing, increasing. So I'm looking for just x values. Where's my only time that I am have my, my max? And it's actually going to be here at negative 2. So it's going to be at x equals negative 2 because f prime changes from positive to negative. And that's good enough for me. That's all you need to do. So that's how I find a relative maximum. Concavity. So now concavity is going to be um, going to be now second derivative. So for the second derivative, I'll make that sign chart right below here for my second derivative. So top one, I'll label the top one as f prime. I'll label this bottom one as f double prime, and that's really going to help us answer these questions. So. <clears throat> at f double prime. Now, what I care about that is when is my rate? What's going on with my rate? My rate here is decreasing, 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 decreasing. That changes at negative 1. So it's going to be a minus sign right there because it's decreasing. And then I'm increasing until 1. Then I'm decreasing until 2. Then I'm increasing until 3. So this is my 
f double prime is when is my derivative decreasing or increasing? So that's how I get all of that. So now let's look at this and say when is concave up. So this is concave up between negative 1 and 1. And 2 to 3. Why? Because f double prime is positive. And that's all you need to say. Okay? So again, we're looking at concavity, second derivative. Looking at the second derivative of a graph that already gives us the first derivative. All we're doing is seeing increasing, decreasing of that. Okay? Where do we have an inflection point? Well, that's again when we change signs. So when we're we changing signs. Here, here, and there. So we have an inflection point at x equals negative 1, 1, and 2, because f double prime changes signs. And there we go. That's all you need to do. This one is what we start to have to think about this one a little bit. Um, final values for which f assumes its absolute minimum. So now we're going to look for absolute minimum. Now I don't have necessarily all these values, so we need to kind of play with a little bit. So remember, I'm going to do the candidates test here. All right. So candidates tests are going to be my critical points. Now I'm looking for the absolute minimum, so I can kind of cheat a little bit on the candidates test. Since I'm looking for an absolute minimum, anything that's going to give me a maximum I don't need to consider. So I don't need to consider negative 2. Okay? I don't need to consider 2. I don't need to consider 3 because they, those can't be absolute maximum or sorry, absolute minimums. They could be absolute maximums because they keep going up and up and up and up. So when I do my candidates test, I consider um, two things. That's two. Two things. Critical points and endpoints. In this case, I'm looking for just the minimum. So my, I only care about my relative minimums in this case. So I'll make my little chart here that I that I always do. So um, uh, for negative three, for zero, because that's my relative minimum. That's the only relative minimum I have here, and for three. And luckily, I'm actually given all of these values right here. So I have negative two, one. And three. So, which one is my um, absolute minimum? So, it's going to be at x equals negative three. All right. Let's go ahead and justify that. And then, so it's by the candidates test. This one requires a little more explanation. So, it's by the candidates test in which we test endpoints. And since I'm looking for just minimums, we didn't test all the critical points. So what did we test? We tested relative min. And that's it. That's your justification there. The last part is just to go ahead and use the information to sketch a possible graph of f. So just use everything that we have here. We're given these two sign charts that I had to figure some stuff out for. Um, and we're going to graph this. So real quick, I know that at negative 3, I have a height of negative 2. At 0, I have a height of 1. I'm just going off of here. And at 3, 1, 2, 3, I have given a height of 3. Okay. So I'm going to increase until negative 2, and then I'm going to decrease, all while being concave down. So I'm going to increase to negative 2, and I have to go above that because when I decrease, I do have to catch that. And then, so here's my relative max. I'm going to decrease, and then I'm still going to be concave down until negative 1. So at negative 1, I'm still decreasing, but I'm going to change it to concave up. So if you notice, my slopes are starting to get a little bit bigger there. Um, again, I'm not the greatest sketcher in the world. I'm not expecting you to be either. And then from here, I'm actually increasing the entire time. The only thing that's going to change is my concavity, which is going to change at 1. So concave up. Now I'm at 1 on concave down. And then until we get to 2, in which we'll go concave up. So it looks something sort of like this. Okay, 
and it does get a little tricky again. You'll not be actually tested on sketching this stuff. It's just I'm doing it for application purposes, uh, just to see, just to show you that you know this graph stuff can help us find out what's actually going on. All right, and that is the video for graphs of f, f prime, and f double prime.